Lewis Nicholson, left back, Inverness. Lewis, your family grew up in the islands. I think your mum from Lewis, your dad from Skye. Yep. What did they do when they were younger? I think my dad was more of a shinty man, believe it or not. He played football a bit, but it was mostly shinty over there. And fishing as well, that's the other thing. Makes for good fishing trips when you go over and visit all the relatives. My mum, she works at a Gaelic school just now. It was mostly Gaelic spoken when she was growing up. and. She's just carried on from that, really. And so the big question, can you speak a bit Gaelic? <laughs> a wee bit. Ruta Beck. Ruta Beck. Well, that's good. That's good. So, um, obviously, they, they moved over to, to Inverness, and your dad, I believe, has a, a very unusual job. Yeah, he teaches people to drive fire engines. Um, he's a driving instructor with them, and it's a, quite an interesting job. But that must be every boy, young boy's dream. Get, did you get to drive a fire engine? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, he's, he enjoys it anyway. Fantastic. So obviously you went to Cradle Hall Primary School. Tell us a little bit about your, your just your general um, enjoyment of it. And did you play any football there? Yeah, Cradle Hall was brilliant. It was there from primary one to primary seven, and played football right the way through as well. So it was we had tournaments in Melbourne mostly, and they, they were good experiences. And we've always got to ask favourite teacher. Oh, favourite teacher, Mrs. Rogers. That's it. There's always a, there's always a favourite teacher. <laughs> of course. And obviously you moved on. Um, you went to uh, Culloden Secondary School, but before you went to Culloden, you joined the Inverness Academy setup. Who was your first coaches, and, and what what was your early thoughts of that? I had Ronnie Duncan and Fiona McWilliams. Uh, they were they were the coaches early on, and Fiona carried on with us right through, and. I uh, absolutely loved it from the first time I was in there. It was playing with good, good players and it's just taken off since then. And who are some of those good young players that you mentioned? The boys that are with us now, the other full-time boys, Ethan, Robbie, Harry and Ali. They you, were the you've standouts. come through the ranks with these lads, which is uh, fantastic. So what was the coaching like? And uh, Give people a flavour of what kind of things you're, the makeup of the week of a young academy player. So it's usually three sessions a week and a lot of ball work really trying to focus on playing football the, the right way and developing actual footballers which is, is really good from an academy um, it's after school usually training but then since we've taken this step going full time it's been through the days and really enjoying it You're a young Inverness Caledonian Thistle supporter um, I believe yourself, your brother and your dad were season ticket holders in North Stand. Who were the early teams that you used to watch and who did you admire? Funnily enough, I was mascot the day they got promoted into the into the Premiership. I remember Adam Rooney scoring in a 1-0 win against Dundee and it's probably one of my earliest memories of them actually. Been been a season ticket holder since I was probably four or five. So it's <laughs> I've loved the club. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is it's fantastic for a local boy to come and play for his local team. How much did it really mean to you when you were given the opportunity to sign a professional form? Oh, it meant everything. Sitting there when I was four or five, I was looking out and it seemed a million miles away and now it's sort of becoming more of a reality. It's amazing for me. Absolutely loving it. Every story um, has sad times. You had a very, very serious injury. Uh, can you just tell the people out there how that injury came about and the process that happened after it? It was last pre-season actually. It was through and there, playing in a friendly, and I was running down the line and I went to turn and I tore my ACL. And so weeks followed, I got a scan and ended up going for a surgery. So I've been back now for two months and that was last October, so it was quite an absence, but when I was going through the rehab, it, it flew by, really. You've obviously spent a, a lot of time in the gym. People have, have spoke about your physique. Uh, do you think that's natural? Is it a natural family physique, or have you had to really work hard at it in the gym when you were rehabbing? Yeah, I think the rehab was a lot of it. It's having Becky in there every day. It <laughs> doesn't take it light, so that was definitely a massive part of it. And of course, your first game back after injury, 
what kind of feelings goes through a player having had such a serious injury and then coming back to play again? Once you're training for a while, it sort of goes out your head a bit, but there's still the odd tackling things where you're a wee bit hesitant, but I'm sure that'll come out with time. Was there a moment, you know, a tackle in training or in a training game where, you, where it was full contact and you thought, oh, I didn't even feel, I didn't even think about that? Did, mm -hmm. When did that happen? It was probably the first game, actually. I got a knock on the knee and it wasn't till afterwards I realised that should have been sore when it wasn't, so that was sort of real turning point where I could sort of say, yeah, I'm, I'm back, and playing, and I'm fit. You've been put out on the clack, um, and players obviously talk about learning things from it. What's your early thoughts? You're, you're about four or five games in. Um, what's your feeling about going out and, and playing in men's football? It's been really good. It's a good experience and not something I've been exposed to before. It's, it's a totally different challenge to youth football, not just the physicality, but playing against all different players and the challenges you have to face it's, it's, it takes time to adjust to it but I think we're getting into the swing of it now and picking up a few good results as well You've been playing left centre back you, you know, I think everybody at the club sees you as a, a natural left back so what are the subtle differences of playing centre defender and full back? There's a lot more responsibility I've <laughs> learned that probably the hard way um, you're last line of defence and you've got to be on your toes all the time covering round for your centre back partner as well it's not not easy but getting used to it you're learning a different style of play it's a different manager um, what are the early things that you've taken on in regards to that is it just positional is it the responsibility it's been said before what, what do you feel that has been the benefit so far i think the biggest thing is the different challenges and Especially in the Highland League, you can't leave yourself exposed or else you get punished. So that's been probably the biggest difference from youth football, I'd say. Just making sure you're constantly compact with the defence. You've, you've got Harry Nicholson uh, joining you. Mark McKinnon's just joined the club. You've got young Robbie Thompson there as well. And there's a few you know, ex-academy players in the team. Do you feel quite at home and quite relaxed playing for Clack at the moment? Yeah, definitely. It, Going in at first, it was hard to learn everyone's name and learn how they are as players, but having likes of Robbie and Martin and Harry as well, it sort of helps you bed in a bit, and then as the games go on, you learn everyone else, and it, it's worked out quite well like that. You work every day training with Cup Broadfoot, Danny Devine, Robbie Dees, likes of Cameron Harper. What little things are you picking up from them in general? Just wee points in training and positioning especially, I think that's a big thing, moving to centre back it's an adjustment but seeing how those players deal with different situations and training, that's probably been the biggest learning curve for me. And you know, Cameron Harper's only 20, you're only 17 yourself, is Cameron Harper going to have to look over his shoulder shortly? <laughs> I hope so, <laughs> yeah that's the aim but Cameron's a good player and he's He's worked hard and he's deserving a chance. You've said that's the aims. What is the aim? What's the dream? What's the big picture for Lewis Nicholson? Just to play at the top. My dream is to play for Scotland someday and hopefully be in a major tournament there. But that's a long way off and a lot of work. Well, but players have to have ambition. What's your ambition as regards to your Inverness Caledonia Thistle career? Well, long term, become club captain, I think. It's something I've sort of dreamed of since I was like I was saying watching in the North Stand as a kid and that, that would just mean so much to me. There's also another little family connection here um, that I think is wonderful for the fans to hear. Tell us about your big brother. Um, he's a referee, don't know why but he deals with the abuse quite well so he's a referee. Um, he's currently doing Highland League and he can do linesman up to the championship but as annoying as it is, he's not allowed to referee me, so <laughs> yeah, he's, he's doing well with that. And of course, you know, we always ask this with, with questions if we're getting to know you. Tell us something that we wouldn't necessarily know. Have you got a secret talent? Now, the reason I'm asking this <laughs> is Fiona McWilliam just let the cat out of the bag. I am I'm a bit of a baker. <laughs> uh, well, teaser slice is my speciality, but 
been known to dabble with other things. And dabbling in what other things? A few sponges and brownies. Yes. So the, the aspect is that when it's your birthday, <laughs> you'll not be doing what the other players nip off to Harry Gow's. We'll, we'll be getting a selection yeah. of your own special made. All homemade. And when is the date of your birthday so we can look forward to that, Lewis? <laughs> 5th of May. Oh, so we've missed it? Yeah, afraid so. <laughs> Lewis Nicholson, thank you very much. Thank you.